everybody, and welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. Today, I am joined by Alex Agana, uh, our automation specialist and resident uh, script ninja. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to be talking about change control and uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment in infrastructure um, by demonstrating uh, our Autolib project. So, um, so how are you doing today, Alex? I'm doing good. All right. Um, so you want to tell me a little bit about how the Autolib project started and what it is? Yeah, the, uh, the Autolib start, uh, library started as we basically had an, a grouping of unorganized PowerShell scripts with no central location to store them. And as we started to store more and more scripts, it just grew out of hand completely. And so we needed a location to store them, you know, change control. We need to make sure that it was organized and that, that they were ready to go. Yeah, so when you started, the whole goal was to really turn everything that had been, as uh, Jason would call it, clicky, um, into repeatable scripts where we were always deploying the same way, at least to get that baseline and then building upon it. Um, Miguel and I, when we're discussing this, we talk about um, building a bridge. So you can have a bridge that goes from one part of the valley to another part of the valley, but then there's no scaffolding underneath, there's no support. And the scripting was more to build that support so that when we did start our projects, we always started from the commonality, right? Exactly. All right. So, yeah, and I remember how many scripts were coming out when we began on that. What's in Autolib and what does it provide us? So Autolib provides us basically a central location for anything development related. So we basically have it for our um, anything PowerShell related, I should say. So we keep in there our ARM templates for our Azure deployments. We keep in there our uh, desired state configuration resources as well to coincide with those ARM templates. We have our modules that we develop in-house that we use in projects. And then we have our one-off scripts that are usually one-liners or made to do only a certain small number of tasks. Okay. Um, so you mentioned ARM templates. Um, is it just one ARM template? I mean, do we have them? How do we organize and how do we decide when something's going to be scripted? So we actually organize it based on how much it deploys. Like if it's completely like infrastructure related, if it's just a virtual network that's given a certain tag versus another ARM template that could deploy multiple operating systems on top of a, uh, like a virtual network. And, okay. Uh, all right. And so this was cool going over this this morning yes. with you. Um, and by the way, everybody, Alex did demand that there is a dinosaur exactly. somewhere in one of the slides. So that's Alex's yep. dinosaur down here. Um, but Alex, why don't you walk us through this? Yeah, no problem. So uh, so Autolib works with directly with Azure Pipeline. So we actually use the build process to basically the same thing you'd use for an actual dev environment with our PowerShell scripts. So it starts with our master branch. So as soon as anything gets pushed to master or it detects a change, it's going to kick off the build process, which in turn zips up the current Autolib directory, moves it to Azure Blob, so we have it there in Azure. And we actually utilize Microsoft Flow to take the, um, the zip file from Azure and actually move it down to SharePoint and kind of keep a local directory there as well. And we have two separate folders within SharePoint, a released and a archive, and it actually works to keep track of it there as well. And so that archive, that contains every prior version. Exactly. And they all have the um, build number attached, the build number attached yep. to it. Right. Okay. Um, so if we do have a change and we realize something's not quite working right, we can go back in time mm -hmm. and find where the other configuration was and pull from there. Exactly. Okay, and that would come right back into here and repeat the whole process again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do um, you want to take us through it? Yeah, no problem. I got the, right. uh, the pipeline pulled up right here. Actually. All right. I'm going to jump over to your screen here. And we're using Teams to share the screens because I don't have all the fancy software on my machine okay. being a marketer. Um, so exactly. Alex is uh, working on his Surface right now to show this off. Cool. Um, so uh, what are we looking at? So this is the pipeline itself. This one is the um, like the starting body that will eventually move it to SharePoint and Microsoft Teams for everyone to grab. So basically under pipelines and builds, we'll find it here. And um, I'm actually gonna go do a push right now just to show it off how it kicks off. But let's just say a push was made from master. I'll queue it up. And from here, build 41 has been queued. So it goes through the entire Azure, like the Azure pipelines we have. So it zips it up, moves it to the blob, and takes care of it there. Okay. And so you can see build number 41 has been entered. 
All right. So that number will stick with the zip file all the way until the end, like or all, all the way up until it's lifecycle, basically. So it'll even in SharePoint, it'll have that build number attached to it. Great. Um, so uh, for those of you watching online, um, we do have a previous demonstration we did with uh, your buddies, uh, Jason and Brian, mm -hmm. where we walked through deploying an e-commerce site using this. Um, this is a much simpler function, but what this is managing is actual enterprise architecture. Yep. Exactly. Cool. So that goes through. So I'm, I'm not going to watch the full output of it, but eventually once it finds its way into Azure Blob Storage, this flow actually what, like sits there and checks for um, any changes made to the blob. So once it detects that that new file has been made, it will actually take the blob content, which is uh, right here, create a file within SharePoint, and then delete the blob in order to not have any remaining artifacts in the blob, because we want to keep that as clean as possible, because that's looking for cons uh, changes and moves mm -hmm. everything down. Okay. And then we have a parallel one that will actually list all the current, like the one that's currently within release, and move it to archive. So that's okay. what this applied to each. So it's just to make sure that the file structure remains consistent. And in the end of that, it produces this. So this is the final location of anything, uh, of all the builds we've done. Okay. So in released, there will only be a single file with the build number attached. Great. And any previous ones will show up in archive with their build numbers attached and the date that they were last moved there. And so this is where the cloud engineers go to get scripts when they're doing deployments. Exactly. Great. Yep. Um, so what's next? Did you want to show uh, one of the scripts? I did actually. Show so somewhere? I'll show um, I'll show around there. So I have the, um, so we use Visual Studio Code a lot to, as our main PowerShell body. And that's what I don't have on my computer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they don't trust me. So uh, I can actually show a bit of the uh, file structure over here. So this is, so let me zoom out of here, but this is full on, like oh, this is Autolib in its entirety. So we have the README over here, which basically will show off what, um, if I can just make this on one screen, perfect. Maybe. Okay. Yep. So we have the folder contents here. So as I was saying before, this is what kind of we have the modules, which is our internal modules for projects. We have the scripts, which are one and one off scripts that just do one purpose or yeah. can do a little bit of things. We have the templates. So templates contains is the root folder of all of our DSC resources and ARM templates as well. We have the certificate that's used for signing it. And then we have import modules, which Will which is a script which will automatically take the modules, imports them, takes care of the auto import as well. So every time you open a PowerShell session, you will get those modules imported. Oh, so cool. if I load PowerShell right now, because I've done this on my machine multiple times, you can see at the bottom, loading personal and system profiles took uh, 827 milliseconds. That is it loading Autolib automatically without me having to touch the computer. Oh, wow. Okay. So when we talked about this in the all company meeting, when Conrad was mentioning it, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that this was just there. Th yes. This is, yeah, this is something oh, that's been wow. added in a recent build, actually. Something ah, so we have Agile Shell. Exactly. So that's wanted, really cool. I wanted to add something that, you know, would help people like, is because for me, it's like when I'm installing a module, you know, you can use install module as the function that's built in with PowerShell. But unfortunately, we don't have this posted anywhere to in order to install it. So the next best thing would be to take the folders, to drag them to your local modules location, and import them that way. So you've automated the automation of the automation. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that this went smooth as possible. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, so if I open up PowerShell, am I going to get this? Yes. If you run this um, this file that is inside Scratch, import modules.ps1, this will take it, and it'll check for elevation, and it will basically move it to the local um, PowerShell or, or the local module folders. That's great. For PowerShell. Um, so we, uh, earlier this morning, we were talking about baselines. Um, is there a baseline configuration you could show us? Um, we do actually. So I have an example right here of the Agile security baseline. So this, this thing's is, a beast. It is. It's a 1,800 line uh, yeah, that's script so, or module file that uh <laughs> I mean I I love yeah. this uh kind of thumbnail you've got over here. It's ginormous. Yes, uh yeah. that's actually one cool thing about code. It kind of pre it kind of gives you a nice little preview window of your entire uh file you're working on, on the side, which is really nice. Yeah, this is not quick basic. <laughs> no, nope, it is not. But yeah, this is this is like one of the modules that's given as example, and this uses mainly the Azure module to actually help us, and it, it uses the Azure modules, and it also actually utilizes the Graph API as well 
to get these policies entered. So it uses a combination of both PowerShell modules and graph API calls okay. to, to accomplish the Intune, goal, or Intune baseline. Right, and so those baselines are where we start with uh, Agile security. Yes. And then we start to work from there, knowing we have a common gr framework yes. where these core things are secured. Mm -hmm. And then now we start to add the additional services we offer on top. Exactly, yeah. Wow, okay. That's that's a lot of code, Alex. It, it is. <laughs> and it, um, it also facilitates building a, um, a uh, Azure group to house Intune Pilot. So that is also automated as well. So um, tell me how that works. Yeah, no, it's, um, so basically what this does is it creates the um, Intune Pilot group. And it well, as it's going through creating the baseline, so it's going through doing the device configuration policies, device compliance policies, every time it creates a policy, it'll actually attach it to the group. So you have automated a pilot group that has all the policies that we just entered already applied to it. And so Miguel and I were talking about configuration drift. Mm -hmm. um, does, and I know that we've had issues where things are changed after we finish a project. Does this do anything to remediate that? To... Yes, so this will actually, so it's not fully implemented yet. That's of course something I'm actively working on right yeah. now, but it's uh, what it's going to do is actually check against baseline. So this will actually go out and see this has been changed in this, this has been changed in this, these are no longer within baseline. Awesome. And it will actually go through and replace anything it does not detect in baseline. Excellent. So I was talking to Miguel about that and I know that that was in the works. So that it is, is the works. that is going to be a really cool feature once that's all put together. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to cover? Um, actually going through here, I can, I can give like a brief overview of like some of the things we have in here. So this is of course one of the um, dev copies of uh, auto lib so it's not there's mm -hmm. some things in here but uh, if i go to not, not there's, if i go to templates arm templates so this is kind of like some of the example arm templates we have here okay what's well. that what are the numbers so the numbers are basically our structuring on how like it goes from um 100 to like 400 and like the, this these two other numbers after that is just basically a uh, numbering sequence for them but 100 is your core application. So this is like the foundation you need to have in order to deploy VMs to Azure. Has your storage accounts, has your network set up, has everything like that. The 300 series are anything pertaining to virtual machines. So if I want to deploy just a single VM, that's simple 300 standard, that's your Windows Server 2016 standard build. Okay. And 400 is a bit more on the... Uh, starts to do a lot more crazy things. Like I have one that deploys um, two domain controllers, creates a domain forest, and then links them together. It's, oh. there's some pretty impressive things. Okay. That you can do with these ARM templates. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so when Miguel and I were talking about the ARM templates and desired state configurations, these naming conventions are, I don't wanna say forced, but they're automatically implemented, right? Exactly. Right, so that is something really important when you get into that scalability, is having the strong naming conventions, so, and this is built in. Um, so you pushed earlier. Mm -hmm. I did. What, what happened? Is it... So let's take a look, actually. So I can <laughs> take a look over at the stream, or at the um, flow, and take a look and see if it actually found it. So it was less modified three weeks ago, that's good. Let's take a look. Oh, this is what you were talking about with load time, I see. Yeah. So it succeeded five minutes ago was its last. Oh, time. that was super fast. So let me actually take a look. Real quick. Uh, let me, sorry, I'm just going through some things. Please. We have Autolib 41. Our push was successful and it made its way onto Teams. So now our latest build is available for everyone within the company. Excellent. Um, now, does this automatically update the PowerShell or do our engineers have to go in and grab? They have to go in and unzip the file. And in order to update the modules, that's kind of why I, I wrote that script that automatically does the import because that will update any modules it finds as well. Okay. So that will take care of updating it as well. And you don't need to worry about the auto import because the auto import always will work. And so now with all of the engineers that we've had onboarded over the last couple months, and as we continue to grow, they're all going to be on the same page, marching in step and Away we go merrily? Yes. Wow, Alex, great job. Um, I'm super impressed. Um, this is your first tech talk. I'm it definitely is. gonna yeah. drag you in here more often. Um, so I'll tell you what, um, I'm gonna go ahead, uh, say thank you to everybody who's watching on YouTube. We're gonna open this up for questions.
um, and see if there's any questions in the question panels. Um, as always, uh, the link to the full write-up on this uh, Tech Talk is in the description down below. Uh, please give us a like, share, and follow, um, and have a great day, everybody. Thank you.